So welcome to our third and final event in this year's Literature for Our Time series. Our guest today is John K. Sampson. So John uh, joins us from Winnipeg, where he is, among other things, a publisher, a musician, a singer, and a songwriter. Since 1997, he has written the words and sung the words for the Weaker Thans. They're from Winnipeg. Uh, <laughs> last year, John released his first solo album, Provincial, and published a collection of his lyrics and poems to date, the book that we're reading in this class. Other than that, I'm going to let John introduce himself via a few words um, that I chose, not him, so don't blame him. I am a faulty string of blue Christmas lights. I'm a frayed rope tying down a leaky boat to the roof of a car on the road in the dark, and it's snowing. I'm a vacuum cleaner cord in the back of a van full of kids cleaning carpets for the Lord. I'm your dress near the back of your knees, and your slip is showing. With the gracious support of Victoria University and the Department of English at the University of Toronto, please welcome John K. Sampson. Thank, uh, thank you so much. Well, I'm so honored and, and flattered uh, to be here, and, and uh, I'd like to thank Nick for his incredibly thoughtful words. And um, yeah, it's just a tremendous experience for me to be here uh, with all of you. And um, I thought I would um, uh, recite a couple things and play a few songs, and then um, a few being, I think, five. And uh, to be exact, precise. Um, and uh, then Nick and I would speak, and then if you have any questions, I'd certainly um, love to answer them. Um, I thought I would start with uh, a poem uh, called Elegy for Gump Worsley. Uh, Gump Worsley was a hockey player, a goaltender for the Montreal Canadiens mostly. And uh, he was one of the last, I think he was the last goaltender to um, play hockey without a mask, which was a, a brave and maybe um, questionable act, especially since it was uh, the early 70s, the era of the slap shot and, and uh, couldn't have been a good idea, really. Um, but he was an interesting character, and I also um, I wrote this I wrote this poem as a toast, and I'm I'm not sure how come it never it never made that never made it into the title. It should be toast for Gump Worsley, but I'm really interested in toasts. I think it's one of those places where those places where all of us, um, no matter what walk of life we're from, are called upon to to say something in public. <laughs> And it's a form of poetry, I think, in a way. So uh, I'm going to raise my glass. He looked more like our fathers, not a goalie, player, athlete, period. Smoke, half ash, stuck in that permanent smirk. Tugging jersey around the beer gut, I'm strictly a whiskey man, was one of the sticks he taped up, gave to a nation of pudgy boys in beverage rooms. Favorites from Plimpton's list of objects thrown by Ranger fans. Soup cans, a persimmon, eggs, a dead rabbit, and a folding chair. The nervous breakdown of 68, 69 after pant crap flights from LA, the expansion. The shrink told me to change occupations. I had to forget it. He swore he was never afraid of the puck. We believe him. If anyone asks, the inscription should read, my face was my mask. Cheers. Well, maybe I'll play that song, Reconstruction Site. It's, I uh, stole the music from a popular southern rock band called Leonard Skinnerd. Um, and it's sort of an act of reclamation in that the song uh, is sort of derogatory towards Neil Young. It's called Sweet Home Alabama. And uh, so I thought I would reclaim it as a Winnipegger. It's part of the hidden history of this song. Uh, also, it just, it's pretty catchy. You have to admit, Leonard Skinner kind of rocks.
Well, I'm lost, I'm afraid Rope tying down a leaky boat To the roof of a car on a road in the dark And it's snowing If I'm more than it means less Last call for happiness I'm your dress near the back of your knees And your slip is showing I'm afloat in a summer parade Up the street in the town that you were born in With a girl at the top wearing tulle And a miss somewhere sash Waving like the queen Beauty's just another word I'm never certain how to spell Go tell the nurse to turn the TV back on and Throw away my misery It never meant that much to me It never sent the get well card And I broke like a bad joke Somebody's uncle told At a wedding reception in 1972 Where a little boy under a table with cake in his hair Stared at the grown-up feet as they danced and swayed And his father laughed and talked on the long ride home And his mother laughed and talked on the long ride home and he thought about how everyone dies someday When tomorrow gets here, where will yesterday be? He fell asleep in his brand new winter coat Buy me a shiny new machine it Runs on lies and gasoline And all those batteries we stole from smoke alarm Disassembles my despair it Never took me anywhere It never once bought me a drink Thank you. I turn it down, I think. Thank you. I thought I'd play this song, Heart of the Continent, and um, uh, it is a, a song about Winnipeg. Um, it's a continu it's sort of a, a sequel to my song, One Great City, in that uh, I do what I often do, just use the same music that I've used before. Um, but in this case, in a pretty direct way. Um, and uh, the sign going into the city of Winnipeg used to say, One Great City, exclamation point, which was always a bit obscure, a bit of an obscure non sequitur that, that I, really bothered me. And then, of course, they took it away. They changed it to Heart of the Continent. and and now I miss the One Great City sign. Um, so that's kind of classic. So I felt like um, I had to write a song called Heart of the Continent. And it references this. Um, I went to see an art piece um, by an Icelandic artist named Harold or Jonasson. And it was this art piece called Crumpled Darkness. It was just all this crumpled black paper in a room. But it was incredibly evocative. and. Uh, and it led to this song, um, which is set at the corner of, of Memorial and Portage in, in Winnipeg, um, site of a building that's no longer there. The north wind sings the fence around a lot full of debris near the corner of Memorial and me. Resurrected brick and drywall leap back into place. There's a terrified reflection of my face. All alone at the gleaming knife display, in the army surplus sails. As the dusk descends and my inspiration fails. Ghosts fill discount parkas, sleeping bags, and peer at me from crumpled dark.
inky bruises punched into the sky by bolts of light and then leak across the body of tonight well, rain and thunder drop and roll then stop short of a storm leave the air stuck with this waiting to be born as i stand before an unresponsive automatic door just another door that won't open for me anymore the exit red gets brighter and blinks off presses me into crumpled dark billboard by the highway it says welcome to the avenue ah. but no sign to show you when you go away and our damn punctuate all we mean to say then leave too late so I'll make my shaky exclamation mark with a handful of crumpled dark copy of my book. Oh. Um, there's notes in here. <laughs> I won't read them, it's, it's good. I, <laughs> what are the answers? It's true. <laughs> it's good. Um, I thought I'd read this love poem. It's called Everything Will Be Okay. It's always surprising, this sense of relief, when you kiss me unexpectedly. I'm reminded of the time I left a shoebox containing ten or eleven thousand dollars on a coffee table in a hotel lobby in northern Italy. I was between floors in the elevator, staring at my reflection, knowing something was missing when I remembered what was, and pushed every button and rolled through the doors sprinted hallways in search of the universal symbol for stairs, barreled down six flights and found it waiting there, untouched and haloed by the light of late afternoon. So I thought I'd play one of my uh, songs that are, that are um, from the point of view of, of, some, of, a, of a real person. Uh, in this case, a man named Bobby Clark, no relation to the hockey player, um, who lives in Norway House, Manitoba, and saw Bigfoot. Um, he saw Bigfoot, and it terrified him. He also filmed it. And, uh, and then it seemed like uh, people really went out of their way to take advantage of him. Uh, a current affair, the American news program sent up a whole crew of people to sort of make fun of him. and and. Uh, and I've, uh, a friend of mine was making a documentary about this event, so he showed me footage of, of uh, Mr. Clark speaking. And uh, so I, I wrote this song um, for him in, in his voice, in a way, sort of filtered through, through me. It's called Bigfoot. Change the oils and oil the squeaks. Patch the holes and fluid leaks at dusk beneath a diabetic moon. And 
wait to take the TV cruise across the creaking ice. The news is howling to the timber wolves, and soon I'll go through it all again. Watch their doubtful smiles begin. But the visions that I see believe in me. So praise the things I can't forget with burgers and a silhouette on t shirts at the council general store. I'll listen to the south wind sigh with rumors and regrets, and I don't want to talk about it anymore. Won't go through it all again. Watch their doubtful smiles begin When the visions that I see believe in me well, The visions that I see, they will believe me I was going to play this song when I write my master's thesis just because I'm here in a university setting and thought it would be appropriate. I wrote this song in Dawson City. I knew I had to write it and, um, and I couldn't figure out how. Um, I knew what I wanted it to be. I thought about writing it in the form of a master's. I'm not checking my email. I'm using the tuner function. It's, it's an app. Um, and uh, I was in Dawson City in February uh, a few years ago uh, and um, was in a bar trying to think of how I would write this song after days and days of very frustrated efforts and I was sitting there in this bar alone called The Pit it's aptly named and uh, um, Bob Dylan's When I Paint My Masterpiece came on the radio and I suddenly I, it was a gift I was like There's, there it is so I took the first song from each verse and I just, or, uh, the first line from each verse of when I paint my masterpiece and, and wrote the song when I write my master's thesis. It goes like this. Oh, the streets. Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas, fill with smoke. The doorbell rings. I put my controller down and pick it up. Shoot some things. Later, the darkness hits reboot and the loneliness increases. said she'd come back home when I write my master's thesis. Oh, the hours I spent in the archives wearing cotton gloves, shuffling photos from the nine at sanatorium. Halloween Parties, emaciated ghost hiding in those curtains, creases. I'll let you haunt the world when I write my master's thesis. No more marking. Sighting sources. 
Bumpy ride to Highway 23 And started west They'll be there to say That I don't need to take Their stupid test Greet me with banners and balloons And my hard drive smashed to pieces Nothing left for me to save when I write my master's thesis. It's all gonna change when I write my master's thesis. Thanks. Well, maybe I'll just end with, with a poem, and, um, and then Nick and I will, will chat. Um, There's a poem called Liminal Highway. When you fall asleep in transit, you rarely wake up much closer to where you want to be. And you've missed the song you're waiting to hear coming up after the ad for a funeral home and the traffic and weather, in a town you'll never live in or even see now that you've passed it, in a dream you don't recall. And you know there's a word for those seconds between consciousness and sleep, where you have arrived at your destination, accomplished your tasks, and concurrently settled into a big old house that needs some work next to the funeral home with some endlessly interesting and kind person you love unflinchingly, and traffic is moving well, weather is fair, you think that word might be liminal, but you're not certain, so you don't mention it to the driver whose name you cannot remember, though you likely know him as well as you know anyone. And you're so weary with loitering between here and there, then and then, beauty and function. You wish you were a three-hole punch, sleek, shiny black, and a mysteriously pleasant weight assisting children with their school presentations while slowly stockpiling confetti for no particular occasion. Just some average day, suddenly it is needed. Thank you. Well, maybe I'll do one more song and then we'll talk. Tearing up streets again to building a new hotel. The mayor's out killing kids to keep taxes down. And me and my anger sit folding a paper bird, letting the curtains turn to beating wings. Wish I had a socket set to dismantle this morning Just one pair of clean socks and a photo of you When you get off work tonight, meet me at the construction site We'll write some notes to tape to the heavy machine like we hope they treat you well Hope you don't work too hard We hope you get to be happy sometimes And bring your Swiss Army knife And a bottle of something And I'll bring some spray paint And a new deck of cards Hey, I found the safest place to 
keep all our tenderness keep all those bad ideas keep all our hope it's here in the smallest bones the feet and the inner ear it's such an enormous thing to walk and to listen and I'd like to fall asleep to the beat of you breathing in a room near a truck stop on a highway somewhere. Well, you are a radio. You are an open door. I am a faulty string of blue Christmas lights. You swim through frequencies You let that stranger in As I'm blinking off and on and off again And we've got a lot of time Or maybe we don't But I'd like to think so So let me pretend these are my favorite chords I know you like them too When I get a new guitar You could have this one And sing me a lullaby Sing me the alphabet Sing me a story I haven't heard yet. Thanks very much. Thank you. We gotta be our own roadies. Oh yes, for sure. This is when you know they're paying you the big bucks. Yeah, yeah. Here, well, I'll take this side. This, ah. is, this is my better side, oh, I see. you know, so it's really, it, it matters to me now, John. You know? Good, good. <laughs> Speaking of which, nice beard. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's a project of mine uh, for the next four years. I'll be growing my hair into Willie Nelson braids. <laughs> uh, I saw a picture of him, and in, in I bought his, uh, at the Value Village, I bought his greatest hits with the gatefold with him uh, looking just like the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. <laughs> Wearing a weird cut-off t-shirt and New Balance shoes and, uh, and these beautiful braids, and I just thought, I'm gonna live my whole life and not try that. I don't think so. So, <laughs> so the beard is to distract from the hair, really. It's working so, for you. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask you about, oh, I forgot to put this one up. Oh, I wanted wow. to have this one in behind you. Well, we can start there. Sure. This is from the... The, uh, the liner notes of uh, Provincial. Yeah. Who are these people? Well, this was a photograph that really, um, that the photograph that I was looking for uh, that kind of made the project for me. It brought it all together. Um, I've come from an Icelandic background, and I was writing about uh, I, uh, the Icelandic pop, the biggest Icelandic population outside of Iceland is in Manitoba, weirdly enough. Um, there That's was a so weird. great immigration in the uh, late 1800s. And uh, so yeah, a lot, of, a lot of towns, like the town of Riverton that I was writing about it was, was um, the settler people there are Icelandic. So, so um, there were a lot of Icelanders in town and my family has a lot of history in, in that, uh, that cultural background. Um, and my grandfather was a, was a printer and, and there used to be two Icelandic newspapers in Winnipeg and he was the printer of one of them. So the story that my dad always tells us that he could read and write Icelandic backwards and upside down, because he had to set the type. So that's always what I always think about how hard that would have been. That's two up on me, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, me too. Um, so I found this, I was looking for this photo. Uh, well, I wasn't looking for this photo. I was looking for a photo that would tie, for me, the record together, because I had four roads that I was looking for. So I wanted something to tie the town of Riverton to the town of Ninette. And Ninette is uh, where the sanatorium used to be, and the buildings still are and where, near where my mother grew up, and Riverton is where my father's family is from. So 
I was internally kind of trying to tie it all together. So, uh, and this, and the, in the photograph there at the bottom says the Icelandic Coffee Club. So I knew um, from experience that Icelanders would have, are still the biggest snobs about coffee that you've ever seen. So they would have, in this institutional setting, they would have, of course, hived off by themselves and, and made their own coffee together. So this sort of made me, enabled me to write the whole kind of story that I think is the kind of center of the record where I, I envisioned um, the guy who's kind of cut off on the right there as, as the brother writing the letter home to his brother saying, um, just get on with your life and forget about me. And you're right, I, do, I did think of it then as the piece of research in the song for, the pers for when I write my master's thesis. There you go. This is very <laughs> thoughtful, uh, very good, very insightful. So yeah, that's kind of, um, so I thought I would include, include this photo. It's a fantastic um, picture. Yeah, I found it in uh, the local history room at the Winnipeg Public Library. So, so they're not just, I mean, you, they're not just fictions. They're, you're writing songs that some of these are like historical fictions, right. which, which in... It is a bit historical. It, in can Lit is a fairly common genre. It's true. But not so much in popular music. I mean, I could think of examples. I mean, Gordon Lightfoot's songs. Sure. Some historical uh, and, no, I hadn't thought of that. You know, or, true. Um, stuff Jan Stevens was coming to mind, too, the stuff oh, he right. does, does about well, He the, certainly wrote about his project about different states was just around the time that I was um, writing this, and I was a little bit like, oh, are people going to think, but it doesn't matter, but yeah. But historical fiction, you're right. I mean, um, I'm interested in it, and my friend Elisa York has written some really yeah. um, remarkable historical fiction, and she's, um, she's some, certainly someone I look up to, so, um, so yeah, there was certainly do, a Do you find it sort of liberating to not be talking about yourself? Is that, oh, is that yeah. partly what this is about? Certainly, yeah, and I think at a certain point, um, yeah, the neutral gear for songwriting is the confessional, right? Right. And um, at a certain point, um, you have to you have to broaden your your ideas and your scope, or um, or you end up writing like I can't really imagine what I would be writing about if I wasn't writing about other people because right. my life is fairly staid and boring now. <laughs> so, and I'm happy about that. I, you know. I was but trying to think about <laughs> it. Because so much of uh, the value or the criteria that we use for, for, for music, um, for popular music, since at least Dylan, is, is you know, authenticity, right? The authenticity of that, that's the, of the lyric confessional speaker, that yeah. this guy's really saying what he feels. And I wonder yeah. what happens to that when you're not, well, you are saying what you feel, but it's filtered through the, the voice right. of a guy who saw Bigfoot. Right, I think that that might be a bit of a dead end for me at least, but I think that um, because it's music, it, there's an actual literal um, literal example of speaking in your own voice, and that's the music that I'm attracted to, is people who sing like they speak, and who, who, are, who don't, um, so in that sense, I still think that that's true, and that's important, and that, I think that's an overlooked thing about songwriting, is the way it's presented, um, whether, whether, whether the singer sings honestly or not, you right. know? I think, I think that there, there's still something in there, certainly. Mm -hmm. um, but authenticity, I think, can be a bit of a dead end. Right. For me as a writer, it has been a dead end. And it can also be achieved fictionally. I agree, right? yeah, and I think that that's the power of fiction, right? Of course, the, you know, the songs are, fiction is all about the writer as well. There's no getting away from it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's these different avenues that uh, enable you to still, to continue writing. I think I'm always looking for strategies on how to write, and I think that that's that's something. The, the, that the cover fun. art, which is where I was going to start, but it's oh, yeah. okay. Um, I think her name is Jeanette Johns. Jeanette Johns, yeah. She's a Winnipeg artist, and she did the art for both the book yeah. and the album. And I'm wondering what I mean. I looked at some of her stuff, and mm -hmm. I can see this sort of a kind of cartographic imagination that would right. that maps well onto the album. Sure. But what what was it about these ones in particular that made you say, yeah, that's the one? I think it was she actually sourced, she found all these old pieces of paper, these card catalog almost type things, and then she actually printed onto them. So it's not it's it's it looks like um, it looks like they're painted on, but they're she actually printed onto them. And it's a really uh, incredibly um, labor-intensive pro process that she, she went through to make these. And I think I liked, I liked that, yeah, that kind of um, the card catalog aspect to it, the really hand-drawn yeah, yeah. hand um, This, this one suggests like sort of 
It's somewhere in between tire tracks and radio frequencies for me. That's right, and codes, right? And codes. I think I was looking for the idea of codes as well. Like right. I was interested in that idea. You've had some amazing luck with the cover art. So the guy who did the, oh, the yeah. cover for Reconstruction Site. Mm, yeah, um, Marcel. Marcel, Zerma, yeah, yeah, beautiful art. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's a remarkable guy. When, when you put the, sum, the songs in the book, the lyrics in the book, the line breaks are almost always different than how they appear in the lyric sheets in the albums. Right. Typically, in my memory, the lyric sheets in the albums don't even have line breaks. They're That's typically right. printed full justified. Yeah. So how, how did you go about that process? And well, they're also, yeah. they're, sorry, they're, some of them sound to me different than when you sing them, too. Was that deliberate? Like the, the I think so, yeah. I think, for me, um, on the records, all the, the lyrics are in a force justified block. And for me, that's a trick as a writer that I, that I do with myself. At the end of writing something, I put it into a force justified block. And if it scans the entire way through, um, then it's done in a way, so it works for me. So it's sort of a test. It's mm -hmm. like the last, the last diagnostic test that the song goes through in a way, weird way that the lyric goes through. So I put it in a force justified block. And for the book, I wanted to open it up to um, some of the original intent of the original re reflexes that, that started the songs. And so some of them began as poems, so I put them back into their poetic structures. And that was kind of fun for me to see them again it looking like looking like um, they had before I'd, before I'd smushed them into blocks, mm -hmm. yeah. No, I think it works, I mean, and there's, there's other decisions you've obviously made too, like the chorus doesn't get reprinted necessarily because on the page yeah. it has a different effect. I've always felt that way and I think that comes from the kind of punk rock background in that um, you have a certain amount of time to say something, um, so you should use it. So I'm not a big core. I I have I find it difficult to write choruses. Yeah, most of the songs don't have choruses. Yeah, right? I mean most, they have musically they have choruses, but uh, lyrically, yeah, I find it hard to sing the same thing more than once. It's yeah, weird. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I wanted to ask you about Edward Hopper. Oh yeah. Uh, this sure. is uh, "Sun in an Empty Room," yeah. um, which is one of the titles. And I is it the book that shows up in Reconstruction yeah, Site? Yeah, the, the Mark Strand book. That's okay. very. Uh, Perceptive of you, yeah. So, so, yeah. so where it's okay. I'm not. <laughs> it's true though. No, <laughs> no I, I, I was really I was impressed just, by that. But what what was the what was the connection for you between? Well, this was an interesting. I I was in London, England after a long tour in Europe with the Weaker Thans, and I felt it was uh, after Left and Leaving had come. Oh no, it was after Reconstruction Side had come out, and and I kind of felt like I was at a dead end as a writer, and I didn't know what I would write about. I went to the Tate Gallery. Um, without knowing what was on, and it was an Edward Hopper huh. retrospective. And I'd known that book, and I'd known Hopper's work, and I was really interested in Hopper for a long time, for a lot of reasons. But, so I went in kind of writers, with writer's block, and I emerged thinking that um, I wanted to write a whole record of songs about Edward Hopper paintings. And I, I got two done, <laughs> but... Um, but that was enough to, to begin some kind of process, and I still think of them as the kind of core of that record. And this was um, Sun in an Empty Room is, is one of the last paintings that Hopper made. So, um, and it's a really stark, uh, in, in real life it's very affecting, it's really, um, it's obviously about death for him in a way, I think, but for me I didn't want to um, address it in that specific way, so I, I thought of it as a, uh, end of relationship song, and, mm -hmm. and that kind of got me started. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Um, will there be another Weaker Than's album? I hope so. Um, I don't want to. Like, I think. I think. I hope so. Certainly. Okay. Um, Where I'm, I haven't written anything for them, and 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 for no um, for no conscious reason. I think I've just been having a really good time with Provincial and and writing with um, my wife Christine for for other projects and. And just doing different things, so I think um, we've always taken a lot of time between records, and it's just mm -hmm. it's the the paces, yeah. the beats between records are getting longer and longer. <laughs> so well, I like very much something that you said somewhere about you always sounded a little silly that bands break up, that it sounds it like does, something at yeah. a high school. You know? It does. It sounds a bit like grade seven to me. Yeah, <laughs> but because uh, <laughs> I think we're all friends and we're all going to play music together, I, d I don't I don't imagine us not doing that. So. Um, but I do have a, I have a, I have a, I, I often need a title before I start for a record and I, right. I think I, like I have an idea of what it's going to be about and I don't know what it's going to sound like yet, but I think 
Okay. So I'm excited about it. I just haven't actually sat down to do anything about it yet. Let's, let's go, go back to provincial just for a sure. minute. The, I wanted to ask you because that's about as far from Grand Theft Auto as I can think. Right. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> and there's, it's, I think Call of Duty show or War of Duty or yeah, something. Yeah, Call of Duty. Call that's of right. Duty. Yeah. 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 Sorry. <laughs> They're no, not no. ones. I've I'm not a gamer either, but I've 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 been around a lot of gamers. And so so what are the what, what are they? What's the thematic significance? What are they? What, what did you got them on the well, album? Well, I'm really interested in gaming um, because I think that it's a. I, I don't know how to do it. I was always terrible at video games in the '80s, and I still am. I have no idea how to play them or anything. But I see people playing them, and our drummer Jason in the Weaker Thans uh, used to be really into Call of Duty, and he would play in. I think it was called a pod or a team or like a. Clan, a clan. Sorry, thank you. Um, and online, and he would play like while we were on tour. He'd be playing in the backstage rooms and stuff online uh, with all these other people in his clan from all over the world. And we would go around like we'd show up in Australia, and there'd be a guy from his clan there, and he'd come backstage and do this like 19-year-old super nerdy like guy. And he and Jason would hang. And it was. I just thought that it was a really kind of lovely thing, and I wanted to think. I was thinking about small towns a lot with this right. record. And I wanted to think about what the internet is doing to both um, uh, uh, connect and and um, and enlighten and um, and make you know develop relationships. It actually does, and it also isolates, right? It At also the same time. isolates and destroys community. Um, so uh, it's a real dilemma. I think it's like, it's got to be um, a huge theme for what we're all going to be thinking about in the next, hmm. in the, for the rest of our lives probably, frankly. The, the epigraph is from, uh, for the album, is from one of my favorite poets, Karen Soley, oh, yeah. um, who's sat in that chair. Oh. And, um, and I think it's everything, nothing happens here, and then everything, no, everything happens here, sorry, everything happens here, then nothing for a long time. For a long, long time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what to your mind, what was that referring to? to is, is here Manitoba, or? Here is wherever I think the song, I, and I wanted to write a record, too, about, I wanted to write a record where I could take someone to eat the site of each song. So there's an actual site that I have, that, I could take, if you had three days, we could, you could drive actually around. go there. Yeah, we could drive yeah. to each song, which yeah. I thought, which was just what I wanted to do. But Karen's, um, from th that poem especially, and that, that line just made me think about how, just the histories of each place. Right. And how, um, how deep they are, and how, um, how they can, they can be, well, how easily they're forgotten, in okay. a way. And how much happens everywhere. Like, how much of, of value and of import happens everywhere. You must it's have felt at a certain point, I mean, peeling back the archives of those highways, yeah, I mean, yeah. the number of stories you could have told is... Oh, absolutely. And there's so many that I couldn't get to in a way and, and I'm kind of sad about, but definitely. And I think that that's kind of, um, that's, that's, that really interests me. You do like a deleted scenes, you know, right. outtakes, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to save them some time for of questions. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but I do have something I want to get to first and that is that this is a tradition where I, I ask you 10 very short oh, questions. Okay. Um, I stole this from uh, uh, James Lipton, host of Inside the Actors oh, Studio. Nice. So if I look over my glasses at you while we're doing it, that, that, that's why. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and you just, you know, first thing that pops into your head kind of thing. Um, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Oh, um, oh geez, I have no idea. Like I... I <laughs> That sounded so promising there. <laughs> uh, well, I think, I don't think I do, I, I am in the publishing industry in my other sort of walk of life, so I think I'd just do that instead. Okay. Those are the two things, publishing and music are the things that I love the most, so okay. I've somehow fluked into being able to do both of them. So. What profession would you not like to do? Oh, uh, well, I, I worked at 7-Eleven for a while, and that wasn't very fun. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, no, I mean, I think uh, there's something to that. I mean, I, I'm really grateful for, for um, the job that I have. Mm -hmm. And John Darniel, who you mentioned before, yes. um, who writes uh, like a record a year, whereas I write a record every five years, says, uh, you know, there's no such thing as writer's block. There's, there's, there's no such thing as convenience store block, so there can't be such a thing as writer's block. Uh -huh. It's, it's kind of true. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite curse word? Oh, I'm not really a curser. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Mm. Probably crap. Crap. 
What sound? Are, there's no wrong answers, John. What? What? What's? <laughs> what, what sound or noise do you love? I do love the sound of radiators. It's a real Winnipeg, old Winnipeg house sound. When they come on, they they rumble a little bit. You can hear the you can hear the furnace come on, and then the and then the um, radiators often start to hiss yeah. and burble. So that's I think probably one a really comforting sound for me that I that I've had around me all my life. It just struck me this reading them through. It's not an experience most people would have unless you were a professor, you know, of sitting down and huh. reading somebody's lyrics oh, yeah. right 15 right. years through. And I'm like, man, there's a lot of radiators in here. It's true, so, yeah. You know. huh. I hadn't thought of that either until you mentioned it. So that's <laughs> um, where am I? What sound or noise? What sound or noise do you hate? Well, uh, motorcycles. Okay. I hate the pocket bikes. Pocket bikes. Yeah. We live on a. I live on a very busy street, and there's something that's called cruise night that happens in Winnipeg every Sunday night. It's very specific, I think, to Winnipeg, and but to small towns in general. And people drive down Cordon Avenue, and then they turn around and they drive back, and they drive really fast and loud. <laughs> and so every Sunday night, it's like these fleets of motorcycles drive by. But then you wrote a song about it, too. So. It's true, in praise of it, actually, yeah. to be fair. Because I had to try and figure out why people were doing it. So I borrowed my mother's uh, Ford Taurus, and I actually went on Real a cruise, cruise car there, John. Yeah, it's not much of a cruise car, but, but uh, Christine and I actually went on a cruise night, and I, it was so much fun, actually. So, so then I had to kind of rethink it, and maybe that was a project for me. I was trying to get inside the mind of these people that were driving me crazy, so... Huh. Uh, at any point in your life, was there a television show that you watched uh, faithfully, religiously, had to see every episode? Oh, uh, the A-Team. Um, certainly, no, there, there's still, the A-Team was the first one I remember. Um, it was certainly a big one for me. Um, but uh, yeah, cert, there, there's, okay. Okay. TV is a, a, a big part of it. I, I watch a lot of TV. It's the golden age. <laughs> right now. Right now. Yeah, no, not yet. Um, what singer, group, or song do you identify with your last year of high school? Oh. I think Billy Bragg, actually. Really? Yeah. Billy Bragg? It was Billy some Bragg. high school. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was, high school was where I finally um, felt like a human being uh, in grade 12. Right. But before that was just a living hell for me. <laughs> yeah. um, but that was when I discovered people like Billy Bragg, yeah. and certainly, yeah. I, I would say Billy Bragg. Um, if you could go for dinner or drinks with any author, living or dead, who would it be? Oh, wow. I think it would be John Berger. Okay. He's, um, I think because, uh, because he combines um, so many different uh, aspects of the artistic life. He's a painter and an art critic and a poet and a fiction writer and um, a political person. And uh, I just think, yeah, he's, he's sort of my um, role model in a way. What, uh, what book is beside your bed right now? Um, uh, I'm just reading this book um, about undertaking by Thomas Lynch, the poet Thomas oh, Lynch. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've read that book. Undertaker, yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful amazing book. book. It and, almost uh, makes me want to die. <laughs> no, it's true. He's yeah. like, <laughs> no, it's pretty good, actually. You're right. That's no, a good way to put no. it. I he's, agree. he's talking about funerals and yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. funerals are for. And what exactly? Yeah. So I'm I'm interested in in ceremony. Yeah. Whatever ceremonies we have left, and funerals are certainly one of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you have a pet peeve about our society that you know had you the power you would fix tomorrow? Not world hunger. That's a big peeve. You know, like a pet, a small, oh, like a smaller one. Small. You know. Yeah. Um, you know. Or you can go big. I don't. There are no rules, really. Right. Right. Oh man, it's like I've been waiting my whole life to be asked this question and now my mind has gone blank. Oh, I'm going to come up with so many after. Um, but I mean, uh, the internet um, is a problem for me. Uh, the internet is really, I, I, you know, I, I came of age before the internet and it still puzzles and delights and I find it really it problematizes everything in my life, if that's even a word. So I think um, that would be something that I would look in. I would, okay. I would limit the idea of the internet. Okay. But that's, I mean, that's a cantankerous and wrong-headed opinion, I think. So. It's, 
it's not up. Zuzi Gartner, our guest last, um, she's she's just gone offline completely. She just gave it up. Well, I had to too, uh, for yeah. the most part. Yeah, I mean, I've done experiments, and I had to give up social media, and um, so, uh, but I still email, is still something yeah. I do. But yeah. 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 We've got a few minutes here, folks. If you have questions, um, there's microphones at either side, I think. I can't see. Um, if you want to, I should have perhaps, you know, alerted you in advance so that you oh, could yeah. go up there. You, you could try. The problem is the cameras won't get you. Ah. Uh, you know? Oh, someone's going there. But, but, we got, oh. but go ahead. Go ahead, John. Uh, oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, I noticed that you, you sang from memory, but you read from the poem. Ah, that's a good point. I did. The question is that I sang from memory, but I read from the poems, and um, that's a that's a weird. Uh, I've been trying to um, memorize the poems, and I find it difficult. And I don't know why that is. Well, I know why that is. It's because it's it's why music and and words went together in the first place. I think, as sort of probably um, a memory trick in in order to be able to to learn them. Like as soon as I start to play, I don't have any problem. Well, I have problems sometimes, but. They just, it just kind of pours out with the cues of the music. And without the cues, I find it really difficult. Similarly, I find it very difficult to write without structure, without the structure of a form and, and songs have, pop music has provided that for me, so I'm really grateful. And I'm always in awe, actually, of real, real poets, poets who, um, who start with nothing. So yeah. Go ahead. Oh. Uh, one quick question and then a request if it's okay. John, uh, wh which high school did you go to? I went to Kelvin High School. You went to Kelvin, yeah. yeah. I, w I went to Shaftesbury. Ah, nice. <laughs> it's down the road. Contentious, yeah. Um, yeah, contentious. And I, I read recently that you had, you, have you delivered the petition ah. um, to, uh, of the rifle? I just wanted to ask you if you could speak sure. to it. Sure. I wrote, I wrote this uh, song called www.ipetitions.com slash petition slash Riverton Rifle slash, which is a... Uh, <laughs> Which is, a, which is a petition, an online petition. I wrote it in the form of an online petition to get the great Reggie Leach into the Hockey Hall of Fame. And um, so I, uh, I gathered signatures at the URL after I played the song. I would tell everyone to go sign it, and I gathered signatures. And then uh, I uh, put together a package with the help of this really interesting data designer in Ottawa. And, uh, and we went down two weekends ago I was here for something else, and, and um, I got together a choir. It was kind of one of the best uh, hours of my life, I have to say. It was really emotional and great. And all these friends of mine came, and, and we all sang the song together at the Hockey Hall of Fame, and then they kind of sang me into the building, and we walked all the way to the front desk, and I handed in the submission, and, um, and I was, it was pretty much one of the happiest moments of my life, actually. It was really... So that's... that's uh, they're considering the the uh, submission now. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Go ahead, if you, if you yell, we'll, we'll just try to repeat yeah, it. we'll repeat, repeat. the question. Um, the poems in the book are added on to the following uh, Right. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I was just wondering how you decide where to write, sure. where to write, whether it's their own stuff, whether it's their own music Sure. Um, he's asking about the poems are, are contained within sections in the book. Uh, and, and I did it sort of chronologically in this case. Um, but for me, uh, I find it difficult. I, 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 I often write poems and then I cannibalize them for songs so I can't use them as poems anymore. So they're the, these kind of inert, these kind of picked over carcasses of poems <laughs> that are, I'm left with. Um, but occasionally I can't cannibalize them, and those are usually the ones, the only ones that exist as poems. So I set them chronologically in this case. And um, for me, the impulse is to be able to sing them somehow. Um, for example, there's three poems on Reconstruction Site that are sonnets. So I wrote them as sonnets, but then um, I didn't. I didn't want them to be. I didn't want to just say the sonnets. I wanted to sing the sonnets. So I built a built a way that I could sing them. So. That's kind of more common for me, but but that's just me, I think. Yeah. Yes, sir. My favorite hockey team? Uh, the 1971 Montreal Canadiens. 
Gee, that's not specific at all. <laughs> <laughs> or somewhere around that era. I'm not particularly fond of hockey, uh, contemporary hockey. I'm more interested in the history of the game. But um, so, yeah. Uh, but the, certainly those teams from the 70s um, delight me for some reason. I don't know why. Because I, I was born in 73. And so growing up, um, I shouldn't really have known those people. But Ken Dryden was my hero for some reason, even though he had retired. Mm -hmm years before um, I was actually conscious of the game. So, but th that era for somehow, again, like I say in that poem, it's like, they looked like they could be our dads at that point, you know? Mm -hmm. And they don't anymore to me. I think folks, oh, we got, we got time for one more. Go ahead. Sure. Yeah. How's ah, for two Good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, it's a fictional cat, I have to say. So uh, oh. I did, I'm sorry oh. to break it to you. It was a conglomerate, it was a, a whole bunch of cats I knew, and it was more, it was also, uh, it's, in, it's taken from the slogan for the city of Winnipeg, unum cum virtute, something or other, one with the strength of many. So it's supposed to be another veiled Winnipeg reference. Um, so in a way, the cat is Winnipeg, uh, which is weird to think. But um, so virtute doesn't actually exist. The, the cat that he was most based on uh, was named Slap. Slap was one of those cats that would you'd be walking by and uh, and you just go like that, and you then you'd look down and your ankle would be covered in blood, and <laughs> and he but he was also the most loving and affectionate cat ever. He was one of those cats. So, uh, but he's no longer with us. He's up on the mantle with the other pets. <laughs> um, yeah, he's still fierce though. I still feel like a emanation from him. But uh, yeah, no, it's a fic fictional, fictional cat, Virtute, yeah, Virtute, yeah. Would you be willing to stick around and sign some Absolutely, autographs afterwards? Yeah, I'd love to, yeah. Um, so there, folks, that's, that's it for us. Uh, we, we'll see you again in two weeks, and let's just thank John K. Samson for coming to see you. Thank you very much.